Having a clue is overrated. There's this funny myth that people actually know what they're doing. I've spent time around some of the richest, smartest, highest status people on the planet. And let me tell you, it's idiots all the way up. Normalize saying, I don't have a clue. I'm going to work out how to do it anyway. Having a clue is overrated. If you want to get fit, if you get around fitter people, you will be deprived of fitness because you'll be the least in shape person. And then all of a sudden you'll be more motivated. If you are poor, but you're the richest of your friends or the same level of wealth as your friends, then get around people who make more money. And then of course people say, but I can't get around people who make more money. Okay. No one else has ever done it. No one who has had it worse than you has ever figured out how to do it. You're right. You know, I really don't have regrets. I'm a, I am a person that says, you know, as soon as you look back in your history and you come up with something that you feel like you want to change, something else has to change. You know, disappointment to me, to win, you got to lose. To be successful, you got to have something that's not successful. Uh, to be happy, you got to have disappointment. So I think all of those things have evolved and happened to make me who I am and understand the benefits and the privileges I have for being who I am, you know, um, and not to wear it on my sleeve, be very humble about it. That's one thing my parents taught me very well is, you know, don't wear your reputation, don't wear your accolades, don't wear your, you know, your personality on your sleeve. Let it happen. Let it be you. It is who you are. Don't hide from it, but don't, you know, don't wear it and rub it in people's faces. Patience, the thing that goes beyond hustle and hard work, the discipline of patience, the thing that goes beyond hustle and hard work. Because we all talk about hustle, we talk about working hard, we talk about grinding, this, that, and the third, but nobody talks to you about patience. Nobody speaks about that patience. Because in the patience, that's where you're gonna make it or you're gonna break. The discipline of patience, it prevents us from insufficient information. The discipline of patience from picking the wrong option. The discipline of patience from going too soon. The discipline of patience from rushing people to the wrong conclusion. Because when you're not patient, you can make a lot of mistakes, man. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap. You judge each day by the seeds that you sow. Right? When you sow a seed, you gotta be what? Oh, you gotta be patient. If life was nothing but green lights and we didn't have yellows and reds, things that make us pause, hardships, crises, times for introspection, then what the hell would it all be for? We need the yellows and the reds. That's how we evolve. That's how hopefully there's some ascension to our being. That's how we give some credit to time and growing older. If we were the same person today that we were 20 years ago, then what, what, I mean, what the hell are we doing? It takes a long time. It takes a lot, a lot longer than you think or want. It's hard as f You're gonna f lose a lot of friends. You're gonna lose contact with a lot of people that aren't aligned with you. You're gonna make new friends, okay? But if you keep going, you're gonna find out what it is that you were meant to do, and you're gonna can be on a different level than everybody else that you know. You are far more capable than you think you are. Stop putting people on a pedestal thinking that they're better than you. They're not better than you. They might be doing it longer than you. They might they might have this, they might be able to fake that it's easy for them, okay? But it ain't. And I'm here to tell you, dude, and I say this from a place of humility because I have a lot to learn, but I'm pretty good at what I do and it's still hard as fuck. It's still hard as fuck. Act like the person you want to become. That's not fake it till you make it, by the way. This is intentional. Intentionally act like the person you want to become. Because when you intentionally act like the person you want to become, your brain sees you taking those actions, so your brain starts to change the way it relates to you. When your brain sees you high-fiving yourself in the mirror, it starts to go, oh, wait a minute. Steven loves himself. Mm. Steven's cheering for himself. We don't beat Steven up. The solution to your problem is not going to be found in the problem. It's not going to be found in there. You have to get out of the problem so that you can look at it, make an assessment, and you can assess how to solve the problem or whether you need to solve the problem or not. I mean, there's a lot of things in my life right now where I shrug my shoulders and go, okay. But it's okay. Oh, someone's saying this. Okay. Roger that. But carry on. No factor. Move on. Start with action and 
make small promises to yourself that you don't break. If you had a friend and every single time that you and your friend decided that you were going to go out for dinner, that friend either showed up two hours late or didn't show up at all, you would stop trusting that person. That is the relationship that you have with yourself. You need to be able to trust your own word. And a lot of us don't because life is very convenient and it is easy for people to not stick to the promises that they set themselves because our ability to be idealistic is always going to outstrip reality's ability to deliver that to us. As soon as you posit an ideal, you then begin to compare yourself to that ideal. And true hell is when the person that you are meets the person that you could have been. If I want to be the best, I got to beat the best. Man, if I want to be good, I got to I got to wake up in the morning and I got to do the extra work. And I got to show up when other guys aren't. And I've got to learn. I've got to continue to be open to learning. But I had to take it to a new level that the other guys wouldn't. Nothing was given to me. Whatever they ask me to do, that's what I'm going to do to the best of my ability. If you're a beginner, you have to separate you feeling something and you acting on that feeling. Because you may feel hopeless many, many times, but you need to continue to do the activities that are aligned with your goal. You may feel hungry, but you need to not eat the cookie to stay aligned with your goal. You may feel angry, but know that retaliating at your coworker has no likely positive outcome. You may hate your boss, but undermining them in front of the team may make you feel good in the moment, but again, destroy your long-term career prospects. When I feel something and I have the desire to act on it, you can, at that moment, you have the lowest action threshold, which means that you're the highest likelihood of behaving or, or doing something is when you have this feeling. And so I want to make as logical of decisions as I possibly can. Hopefully we're all aligned on the fact that logical decisions in general work out better than illogical decisions. And so if we make logical decisions on a regular basis, then we'll have longer term outcomes. If we want to increase the likelihood that our decisions in general are logical, then we want to create space between when we feel and when we do. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you need to act on it. And if you have an idea that you want to act on because of a feeling, if it still feels good in the morning, then do it. But I've never regretted taking time before acting when I was angry, but I sure as hell have regretted almost everything that I've done immediately the moment I felt angry. Just do things, and, and if you like it, you'll probably be better at that than anything else you choose to do. Because you, you will invest even your downtime doing it. And as the saying goes, pick something you would do for free and make that your career, and you'll never live a sad day in your life. People cap themselves. They look at somebody, and because their mind can't imagine it, they then start talking shit. This, he has to be doing this, or he has to be doing that. There has to be some trick. There has to be some potion. This is bullshit. No, it's because you cannot allow your mind to open up for the possibility of it can be done, which is why you, you being people, yeah. are where they are today. Because yeah. you have not, you shackled your mind to have limits. And everybody has a limit, but find it first. Do not be discouraged by the struggle. Mm -hmm. The struggle is a good sign that the Spirit of God is at work in your life. Yeah. If you're not struggling in any way over sin, I worry about you. Yeah. But if you're that person's like, dude, I'm just struggling. Good. Good, bro. Mm -hmm. Because what you're recognizing is, is that there's this war, as you said, raging between your flesh and the spirit. And both of these are trying to win out over the other. You yeah. know, your flesh is trying to draw you away from God and toward sin. And the spirit of God is trying to draw you away from sin and, and toward God in a life of righteousness. And so that internal battle shows that the spirit is in you, that you have been saved, that he is working to save you in present time from the power of sin. Be encouraged by the struggle. Yeah. Lean into the struggle. Yeah. The great news is the spirit of God can give you power to put the flesh to death, mm -hmm. that the flesh has no authority over you. As Paul says in Romans 8, you're not obligated to sin any longer. Mm -hmm. You do not have to say yes. The enemy wants you to believe the lie that you have to say yes, yeah. that the flesh is too strong for you, that you can't overcome it, but the Spirit of God is there so that you can. Yeah. And so as long as you will walk in step with him mm -hmm. and, and yield to him each day and ask him for what you need to put the flesh to death, 
He'll give it to you, and then he'll lead you in the way you should go. Gratitude's an excellent practice, man. Yeah. It's the opposite of arrogance and resentment. I, I don't think, I think it's a great thing to become an expert at. And I think that you can allow yourself happiness if you're, if you're grateful. There's a divine quality within every human being, and the only way that you could see it is to become it. If you're truly going to trust yourself and trust your intuition, if you're truly going to find the place um, to be kind and considerate and caring in your life, um, there's just a part of you that you're going to have to leave behind. Man, who are you when it goes south, man? Not when you get what you want. Mm -hmm. We know when the sun's shining and you get what you want, you're going to smile. Right. Babies do that. I give them a bottle, they're going to smile. Mm -hmm. I give them what they want, they're going to smile. I give a puppy a snack, he's going to smile. But when you don't get what you want, when it doesn't go the way you want it to, even if it affects and impacts you on a physical level, who are you, right? right? Because that's the person that your kids are going to learn from. That's the person that your parents raise. Mm -hmm. That's the person that will go out and either positively or negatively affect and impact the world. Who are you? I'm obsessed with finding myself now after and, and, and not having to prove anything to anybody other than myself mm -hmm. and my family, you know? Mm -hmm. Really myself. Mm -hmm. And realizing that that is enough. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like giving your best is enough. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we lose track of that, you know? And so for anybody out there, you know, you're enough, man. Well, I'm afraid to make a change and I'd say, well, that's okay. That's understandable. How afraid are you not of not making a change? Let's make a little vision of that. You're 35, you hate your job. What's the consequence? You're not motivated. You don't want to get out of bed in the morning. You're starting to get depressed. You're getting bitter. You're getting resentful. You're getting cynical. You're amotivated at work. You're not doing a very good job. And you're starting to shrink. Now play that out for 10 years. You don't change it. You don't fix it. And what happens? Well, it's not like it's going to get better of its own accord. What's going to happen to you? Well, for sure, at minimum, what's going to happen to you is you're going to be in the same situation, but 10 years older. And if you can't get out of that situation now, what the hell makes you think you're going to get out of it in 10 years? Manifesting is real. When you figure out who you are and what you want to do, and you devote your life to it like, like a maniac, like you're all in on this thing, and you manifest, most of these people end up, you know, doing what they say they're gonna do and being who they say they're gonna become. It's real, it's, and there's no excuses, there's no fucking days off, there's no, uh, you know, not willing to grind, and, you know, the, the, everybody's against me, and this didn't happen for me because of right. this and that, and all this whining, and, and, and you know, pussy ass bullshit that a lot of people do these days is these people who dive in and they're hardcore and they're focused and they know what they want, they know who they are, and they lay out these short-term goals and this roadmap on how to get there. Most of those people make it. And as I've said since day one, it's motivation is a feeling that comes and goes and it doesn't matter whether it's there or not. Discipline is infinitely more important. So no matter how you feel, get up and do what you're supposed to do. That's it. And that's discipline. That's not motivation. If you only did what you were supposed to do when you were motivated to do it, that's leaving it to chance. But if you're disciplined, you go do what you're supposed to do. That's the way it works. You're going to have hard times. You're going to have great times. You're going to have times where you're proud of yourself. You're going to have times where you're not proud of yourself. You're going to have times where you're winning. You're going to have times when you're losing. Such is the journey called life. If you think that being happy is a 24-7 destination that you're going to get to and you're going to have all this joy and all this happiness and all these feelings of that are good and never any bad feelings, you're going to always feel bad because your expectations are out of alignment with reality. You cannot achieve that. That is not achievable. So the minute you have anything outside of that, the minute you have a hard day, the minute you have frustration, the minute you have anxiety, it's going to be much more amplified because your expectation is that there shouldn't be any of it. Life is
hard. And let me tell you how it's hard. It's either hard in the beginning or it's hard in the end. You either suffer when you're young and have a better back end or you suffer or you party when you're young and you suffer on the back end. When it comes to happiness, happiness should be viewed as daily moments that make me happy. I have this moment that made me happy. I had that moment that made me happy. I had this moment that made me happy. And we should be grateful for those moments. We shouldn't be mad that that 24 hours a day wasn't this happy experience. Should is just like the expectation motor of like all of our psyches. You should go to school. You should get a degree. You should do this job. You should marry her. You shouldn't stay up so late. You shouldn't work so hard. You shouldn't, you should be more balanced. You shouldn't be working out so much. You're not working out. Like it's, there's all these shoulds that other people tell us. And it's like, and you zoom out and then you see that it's a galaxy with a little dot of dust. It's like, should what? There is no should. Do what you want to do. Maybe your purpose in life isn't related to your job. Mm. Maybe your job is your job and the job is the thing that supports you. And then the rest of your waking hours are devoted to your purpose, mm. whatever that is. Mm. And, and it's beautiful when it happens, mm. but it doesn't always happen. And it's out of our control also. Yeah. Yeah. We can decide, I, I would say, if you need to have a job to support yourself, that's great. That's a noble thing to do and follow your dreams. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not saying they're one thing. Yes. They don't have to be one thing. And yeah. don't let following your dreams undermine your ability to support yourself.